Hi, Electron John here, and today I want to talk about battery technology, batteries that are failing, high voltage batteries, batteries in general. So in order to make any battery work, it all talks about the acidic content, so the chemistry inside the battery. So as that acidic content loses its acid inside of it, whether it's a lead acid battery or a lithium style battery, as it starts to get diluted or as the chemistry inside of it starts to fail, we say that the internal impedance inside that battery causes the battery to become out of balance. You have some lost miles between charges and eventually that's ultimately what ends up killing a battery pack. What I'm going to show here is not technically lithium batteries and it's actually going to be more of a hydrogen fuel cell, but it gives a pretty good visual representation of what happens when we're talking about how the internal composition of a lithium style battery, any battery in general, how it actually starts to fail. So to do this little test, if you wanted to do it for some of your students in your classes or whatever, we would need some regular baking soda. We're going to need some distilled water. I'm gonna put some distilled water inside this beaker. I'm gonna add some baking soda to it. I'm gonna mix it up. Then I'm gonna add some power. We'll start with the nine volt battery. It's gonna take a long time on film with the nine volt battery though to get the results that we're trying to show here. So I also have a higher voltage um, individual lithium style module. I'm just gonna add some distilled water to the beaker. Try to add enough so that we can see it. No scientific approach here. I just put some baking soda inside the smaller beaker, mix it around. What we're trying to simulate here is the chemistry or the electrolyte inside of a battery. Now I'm gonna take an anode and a cathode and I'm going to connect the negative lead and the positive lead. And then I'm gonna take the two anode and cathodes, I'm gonna stick it inside and we can start to see the bubbles that are occurring inside there. Now we don't wanna let the anode and cathode touch because we possibly could create a spark and technically this is how a hydrogen fuel cell works is the gases that are being created inside this beaker are very flammable so we don't want any kind of spark okay so to make this a little bit easier to see i'm going to switch from the 9 volt battery over to this individual 13s or 13 string which is approximately 48 to 50 volts depending on how much charge it has in it and we see that we have a much higher bubbling rate here now the longer I leave this in there, the more we're going to start to discolor these rods. That kind of represents that the materials of the anode start to strip and they're stripping and they're diluting this mixture that's in here. Now again, we're creating hydrogen gas so we definitely don't want any kind of open flames or sparks or anything because there is a little bit of a level of danger there where it could actually want to ignite that hydrogen gas and possibly blow up the beaker here. Now what we're actually looking at is something that's called time of flight, so TOF. What we're actually measuring with time of flight is we're seeing how long it takes for the electrons to travel from the anode to the cathode or back and forth and it's all directly related to the chemistry of that battery pack. So if, it's, if there's not as much acid inside the chemistry of the battery, then obviously that electron flow is not as easily obtained going from one cathode to another, anode to a cathode here. So that's what we're actually measuring. Now the only way to get a true measurement of that is while you're asking the battery to perform some kind of load. Now that could either be while you're driving it down the road or it could be while you're charging the battery pack. Either one of those we will see that electron wanting to flow between the two posts, the positive and negative posts there. So a little representation is, here's a little waveform that I captured from using a scope and I can kind of see this. And this is actually a good way to have a good view of the time of flight there. And also if you can capture that waveform, you can also determine if it's out of balance or not, because I can actually see the individual cells within that module, I can kind of measure the, the time of flight between all of them there. Again, I know it wasn't 100% off of a battery, we're using hydrogen fuel cell there, 
but I was trying to rack my brain about how to show some kind of visual representation. And this was probably the best example that I could come up with at the time. So I hope you found it interesting and hopefully it answered some questions for you. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.